According to federal prosecutors, the group attempted to inflame passions on the Internet related to immigration, gun control, race relations, and other hot-button issues. Let's turn now to the midterm elections. There are several fringe candidates with extreme beliefs who made it on the November ballot. A lot of voters are asking how that could even happen. WGN's political reporter, Tamon Bradley, is here now with more on just how it did happen. Tamon? Hi, Joe. Hi, Lourdes. Nazis, conspiracy theorists, far-right, far-left candidates have made it onto the ballot this November. Tonight, a closer look. Democrats call him outrageous. Republicans say he's a disgrace. This website and its treasure trove of vile anti-Semitic posts belongs to avowed Nazi Arthur Jones, the Republican nominee in Illinois' 3rd Congressional District. He's got virtually no chance. It's a solid blue district represented by centrist Democrat Dan Lipinski. But how did this happen? How did a Holocaust denier run unopposed in the primary? Tim Schneider is Illinois GOP chairman. Well, first of all, Arthur Jones is a despicable human being. Uh, and he should not, he does not, and should not be representing the Illinois Republican Party. But he is listed on the ballot as the Republican candidate, despite the party's effort to remove him. Arthur Jones came in at the last minute, submitted his petitions. Uh, we went through each and every one of those petitions to see if we could knock him off, and we could not. There was no Republican who wanted to run for that? No, we actually tried to recruit many people in that race, and we're not able to find a credible candidate that wanted to step up. Disgusted by Jones, write-in candidate Justin Hansen hopes to break through. That our Jones and some of the things that he stands for and openly stands for still can so prominently exist and have such a platform in 2018 is unacceptable. In the 17th Congressional District, has become a cabal of grocery clerks mediating between an oppressively bloated government and its constituents. Bill Faywell made it on the ballot as the Republican challenger to Sherry Bustos. We injected cocaine and heroin into the system to enable a wealth effect in the economy, and now we're maintaining it with Ritalin. In Illinois House District 51, local Republicans chose Helene Miller Walsh to fill the vacant seat. She's married to conservative firebrand Joe Walsh, a former congressman. Helene Walsh, like her husband, has expressed controversial views, some of which were reportedly posted on Facebook. I don't even know what hate speech is. Hey, you're allowed to say whatever you want in this country. We have, we have the First Amendment. That's called free speech. Does she represent the values of Illinois Republicans? The Illinois Republican Party does not uh, put pressure on from the top down. We let the local legislators elect and choose their individuals in those races. Hate is on the rise. The Southern Poverty Law Center says the number of white and black hate groups has surged under President Trump. And you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. Republicans have been accused of amplifying the views of extremists. Do you think your party can do a better job to stop hateful ideology? Well, I think, I think we are picked on because the Democratic Party does the same thing. They have despicable candidates on their side just as well as we do, it's just that the media doesn't cover it in the same way that they cover Republicans. But I have to say it. Republicans you know, point to Minnesota Congressman Keith Ellison, also Democratic National Committee you know, Deputy you know, Chair, who has faced questions about his association you know, with Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan. White folk don't like Farrakhan. There could be a silver lining. Research shows extreme candidates mobilize the opposing party to turn out, keeping the fringe on the sidelines. With the country so polarized, the rhetoric so sharp, it's become harder for political parties to call out their own. Can't normalize hate, Lourdes and Joe. Indeed, Tamon, thank you. In fact, you can follow all of Tamon's election stories and more leading up to the midterms next month. Check out a special section of our website, wgntv.com slash decision 2018. You can also follow along with our free WGN News app. Make sure you enable push alerts as well. Quick reminder, Election Day, November 6th.